Your Creative Force by Avian is currently available on Global Voice Radio. Talent is a flame. Genius is a fire. Broadcasting Hi, from the San Francisco Bay Area, the all new all creativity. Hosted by international award-winning artist and entrepreneur, Avian. You are listening to Your Creative Force. And now here's your host, Avian. Today's topic is really one that hits home for me because I am actually right now as we speak busy with a major rebooting of some aspects of my business. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you guys the journey I'm on right now. I'm expanding, I'm rebooting, I'm restructuring, I'm doing everything very, very differently. But we're going to look at rebooting today and I want to just make it clear we are not looking at relaunching. For me, relaunching is something different than rebooting. So we are going to distinguish between those two things and we are going to jump right in. This show is all about the juice. We are not having any fluff here. So I hope you are saddled up and ready to ride with us today. (laughs) Okay, so rebooting your business flawlessly. There comes a time when you do not just need to expand your horizons and operations as a small business owner or entrepreneur, but also, ironically, you have to reboot certain aspects of your business, which usually involves editing some people and some problem problem areas out of your business, right? We always think of adding things or growing or expanding, but we forget that there's a reality of editing things out as well, okay? It usually involves editing some people and some problem areas out of our business, okay? And this is where rebooting becomes so critical for us. When we run an organization for a long time, We tend to start dragging passengers with us who may not be in our best interest. Sometimes these can be outdated operating procedures. Sometimes these can be partners or vendors who are simply not on the same page with us anymore. And this is a common issue that we cannot shy away from. Okay, I feel like a lot of times we try and avoid this. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to risk offending someone. We do not want to risk burning a bridge in the process. So we sometimes allow passengers right? Things and people we don't really need to take with us into our next season. We allow those to be along for the ride when we should actually be saying no and doubling down and going in a different direction, right? And this is a common mistake that a lot of us make, okay? It's a common issue. So if you're feeling like you're the only one facing this kind of thing in your business right now, don't feel alone because you totally are not, okay? Now, guy, rebooting our business into an ever more streamlined and focused direction is a critical part of owning and running any business, however large or small, even if you want to just not expand too much, you still need to pay attention to this. You still need to reboot from time to time, okay? So in episode 25 today of Your Creative Force, I'm going to take a long, hard look at how the experts view the things we need to address with regard regards to rebooting our business. And I am also going to speak to you from my own personal experience as I have gone through this before and I am indeed going through a reboot again. (laughs) Okay. So in part one, we're going to focus on what does it mean to reboot and how do we know it is actually time to reboot, right? There's a timing thing involved here. So For me personally, to reboot a business essentially means to make a new beginning by changing something drastically in favor of a more healthy and streamlined business path forward, okay? When you reboot, you're not doing it to be mean to anyone. You're not doing it because you're failing or because you are afraid. You should never do, and here's something you need to always remember, you should never make business choices based upon fear, okay? You can't do that. That is a very 
very <laughs> non-smart way of making business decisions. You, you will feel fear if you care about your business and if you have a huge vision and if you are someone who has ambition and wants to go to the next level, you will feel that fear, but you cannot base a business reboot on feeling some sort of fear in your business. Okay. You cannot, every time you feel afraid, you cannot just suddenly change direction. That is not what we're talking about today either. So we need to be very clear. I'm going to repeat this. To reboot a business essentially means to make a new beginning by changing something drastically in favor of a more healthy and streamlined business path forward. See, your mindset for doing a reboot in your business needs to be a positive mindset. You cannot reboot a business coming from it out of a negative perspective or a negative experience or a negative angle on what you're doing in your business. You need to take a step back, take a look at the big bigger picture, realize your pros and your cons, realize your flaws and your perks and all the great things and all the bad things that are going on in your business. You need to see it all in perspective and in context before you do something like a reboot. You cannot just do it because you're scared or because you're negative or because, or because you're having a bad day. Right? <laughs> That's not good. So this doesn't mean you have to relaunch your business. And this I need to be very clear with you guys about right from the get-go of our episode today. Unless your business is in a ton of trouble to begin with, right? You may need to relaunch your business if your business is so dysfunctional, so messed up, and in so much trouble that you simply cannot go forward without doing a major relaunch of everything. Or for me, Okay. I have relaunched before, but then it was usually to create a major change of another reason, right? Sometimes you can relaunch as part of a reboot, but you cannot relaunch constantly because it may backfire. It starts affecting your brand perception negatively. Okay. To reboot is often an internal change or direction instead of an outward change or direction that you take in your business. Remember that because a reboot is something you probably do at least once a year. Okay. When you get all the financial numbers coming in with your taxes or some people do it quarterly, right? They reboot things based on the numbers in their business, but it's more than numbers. Also, you have to realize it. It's got to do with your business culture. It's got to do with your core values. It's got to do with, are you still on track? Do you need to expand also comes into play with that. So you need to reboot almost, I would say at least on once a year basis, you kind of need to reboot rethink, restructure certain things, right? Because things change so fast, guys. That's the thing. We're living in this era right now where things change on a daily basis in the business world. And to be honest with you, I don't even feel like I can keep up most of the time. It is a lot to keep up with. Really, it is. And so if you don't stay on top of things in your business, you are going to very quickly find yourself being outdated and not not being on top of things and not even knowing where to go next and you're going to become overwhelmed. So why do you want to reboot? That is also something I could throw in here is essentially because rebooting proactively will prevent you from running into crisis mode with things in your business, right? If you can proactively look at your business and say, these are my pain points. These are my problem areas. These are the things I need to address. These are the things I can do better. These are the things that are, go are going to be my priorities for the next season. And you stick to that and you can come up with small doable steps like we've spoken about, remember in previous episodes, then you know you're on a winning path. Okay. But if you allow things to spin out of control because you're not rebooting as you should when things come up, then you're going to be looking at a whole other ball game. And that is when the anxiety and the overwhelm and the procrastination and all those horrible little foxes <laughs> come and they spoil our vineyard, right? They make us incapable of really running a very healthy and a very successful organization. So, okay, when I reboot, Okay. I usually do it internally. In the last 20 years, I have only relaunched two times outwardly. And both of these times, it happened to be a major branding overall and a fundamental change in my business plan. One of the overalls I did, which was a relaunch, was I used to do, um, I used to do, uh, decorative art as well. I used to be involved in the 
decorative and design industry. And I used to do interior oriented kind of pro- projects. And I did public artworks, which is murals and large scale murals and such. And so I even did four finishes and I, and I did very well doing four finishes and doing this kind of work. But I realized that if I really wanted to take my career to the next level and if I really wanted to do fine art, I couldn't possibly do all these different kinds of art in all these different kinds of industries anymore. So I had a major relaunch with a brand new brand when I went from my previous business, which was called Art for Spaces and I relaunched into Avian. Right. And with that relaunch, I fundamentally changed what I was focusing on, what I was doing as, as a business, as an art based business. And I relaunched myself into a whole other type of almost realm in the art world by doing so. But, and the other time that I relaunched was because I had to relaunch an existing business that I had in South Africa. I had to relaunch it in the United States. And so that required a whole new way of branding also and a whole new way of doing business and even completely different content on my webpage. So those were the only two times that I did a total relaunch. And I won't do a relaunch in that regard generally, because you have to understand if you relaunch your business constantly, and every time you have a new logo and a new brand and a new identity and a new product, and it becomes overwhelming and people don't trust you anymore, right? Because you're constantly relaunching. It's like, okay, so is this guy failing all the time? Is this girl not knowing where she's going because she constantly relaunches? So you don't want to do outward relaunches all the time. That's not what we're speaking about, okay? You have to do reboots and you have to do them internally, okay? I have internally rebooted my business multiple times. And at the time of putting together this episode of Your Creative Force, I'm once again going through a reboot, as I've said, okay? I think we have to reboot often when we are a smaller organization because it will prevent us from getting stuck in a startup phase of doing business, okay? Sometimes what happens if we start out in business, especially if we are a small business, we can fall into this trap very easily where we start off doing certain things for certain clients in a certain way and then we're we're making ends meet we're paying the bills we're surviving but we kind of get stuck there it's like we're in this plateau right and we can't move on and uh, yes the business is working I mean it's in the black and it's doing all right and I can pay my taxes I can pay my people I'm not in serious debt or anything but I don't feel like I'm really advancing. I don't, I don't feel like it's really going anywhere. It's kind of just perpetuating itself, right? Sustaining itself in the same place over and over again. And when that happens, I think that is when you really need a reboot, especially in a small or a startup kind of situation, right? You don't want to get stuck in that phase where your business is at the beginning, which is pretty much survival mode. And getting stuck in survival mode can really hinder us in our business progress. And that goes for any kind of organization, no matter how big or small, no matter if it's non-profit or for-profit or what kind of organization you are running, this is really the truth. Even if you're just a one-man freelancer kind of person by yourself and not really this entrepreneurial person, it's true for you also. It's even true for someone in a hobby, right? You can get stuck in your starting boots and then you can't move forward and you plateau and you don't really grow as a person or a business at all anymore, okay? So you have to understand that comfort zones, are not your friend when it comes to the entrepreneurial journey. And I find that rebooting my business into a fresh, more sophisticated direction as I go and doing that constantly, that ensures that I retain my core identity while adapting to an ever-changing playing field. You have to understand, okay, that though your world may be just you and a few people working with you and a few business associates, your industry, whichever industry you are finding yourself in as a small business owner or entrepreneur, 
is very big and there's a lot of changes and a lot of upgrades and a lot of advancement constantly happening in every industry. It doesn't matter if you're a mathematician or an artist or a doctor or a lawyer, your industry is constantly evolving. And if you don't stay on top of things and if you don't really know what is going on in your industry beyond your little world, and if you just stay in your little comfort zone and you don't really grow and you don't really challenge yourself, you are very quickly going to be surpassed by your competition because that is just the nature of entrepreneurship. That is just the nature of how the beast works these days. It was different, I think, 20, 30 years ago before the internet. I think it was really different. I think a lot of smaller businesses could survive just being a local business and just sustaining the status quo. I think in today's playing field, it's much harder because the internet makes it possible for most businesses to thrive internationally if they were to choose to do so, right? So if your business, for instance, is a local restaurant, but you don't deliver and you don't allow people to get takeout from your restaurant... Guess what? One block down from you, there's someone who is deploying DoorDash and they can deliver and they can get fast food out fast and right. And if they are delivering a similar product to you, people might favor them over you because their services are better and faster and more in tune with the 21st century, right? So you have to agree, at least be on top of these things, right? You cannot settle for your comfort zones. It is, it's going to eventually harm you. It's either going to create a glass ceiling for you in your business or it's going to actively harm your business and cause you to bleed customers to other businesses who are more on top of things. So be aware of that. Okay. Now I want you to not misunderstand me once again, right? It's very important to me that I really make myself very clear to you guys. I don't want you to misunderstand me when I speak of changing direction. I do not mean that you must change everything from the top down, okay? This is a total overall and relaunch and not the same thing, okay? A reboot doesn't mean that you have to go into your business and suddenly just change everything from the top to the bottom, okay? A reboot is a little bit different, okay? It is more like a calibration, like a way to navigate our path as entrepreneurs more successfully and without too much clutter and baggage that can hold us back. Think of a reboot like a spring cleaning of your organization, right? You are just getting rid of old cobwebs and hoarded items. You are keeping things real, decluttered, fresh and functional instead of outdated, bloated and dragging around dead weight. Very important. Okay. A relaunch is when you do a total overall from your business plan to your operations, to your contacts, to your industry. A relaunch can mean a total overall of everything. A reboot is taking what you have and optimizing it. Basically, it's not doing everything from scratch completely differently. Okay. If that's what you need to do, then that is more like a relaunch. Okay. (laughs) So you have to understand that we all drag around dead weight in our businesses. Sometimes it can be as simple as we are no longer partnering with the right people. And these are easy fixes in terms of making, making fast changes that really help us move forward. They may require some work, but they are usually not that hard to accomplish. A reboot is like a lighter version of a relaunch, right? It is like a calibration, like change, allowing change to come in to your business and to optimize your business. Okay. It is time to reboot when there are three things that will tell you that it is time to reboot. Okay. Number one, an aspect of your organization is becoming a huge drag. It might be a time suck or a money pit that doesn't really produce good effective results. You may need to close down that area of your business, put it on the ice or simply hire someone to take care of it more optimally. This is part of your business that is costing you more than what it is benefiting you in terms of time and money, okay? Sometimes it is as simple as hanging on to a partner or contractor who doesn't really serve us well any longer, okay? So 
You reboot when you, something in your organization is becoming a huge drag. Number two, you reboot when a pain point you can no longer ignore but is not entirely within your control becomes the red light. For me, this has now become evident in one organization I partner with, right? The issue is not that they are a money pit or a time suck for me, not at all. But the organization has recently become so dysfunctional and toxic in their own internal business operations that it is simply an awful experience dealing with them constantly. Their contractors are negative, their physical building is falling apart, their affiliates are dwindling and their core values are self-defeating. I also have concerns about their ability as a partner and I have decided that I cannot work with them long term any longer. This has now prompted me to look into partnering with other organizations instead. Okay, so... Sometimes something outside of your control, like a vendor or an organization that you partner with in a certain aspect of your business, can just, things can just go wrong, right? And it can be outside of your control. And you have to look at this and you're like, okay, do I really want to carry the weight of this here? Like in this situation, if I continue to partner with this organization, I'm going to start running into some problems pretty soon because some of their dysfunction is now starting to spill over into my business and I cannot afford their dysfunction to become my dysfunction. You see how that works? So as tragically as it, as it sounds and, and as hard as it is for me, because these people have been part of me, my business affiliations for a very long time, I am now in a position where I need to start getting other organizations involved in this, this aspect of my business instead. And I have to kind of back away from this organization because I cannot afford my business reputation to be linked to something that is that dysfunctional. You see how that works? So number two, a pain point that you can no longer ignore, but it's not entirely within your control becomes a red light. Then number three, you are in fact dealing with some outdated operational aspects of your own business. Your marketing, your client base, your location or such needs to expand or change to a certain degree or you feel spread way too thin. Things feel out of control and overwhelming in a way that doesn't make you feel good about your vision any longer. What you have always been doing is no longer working very well and things are spinning too fast for you to keep the rein securely. In this case, you will likely have a gut feeling that you need to shift some gears and that's normal, okay? So, it is time to reboot when, number one, an aspect of your organization is becoming a huge drag. Okay. This can involve things or people. Okay. When we're talking about these things, it can involve things or people. Number two, a pain point you can no longer ignore, but it is not entirely within your control becomes a red light. Also things or people, right? Number three, you are in fact dealing with some outdated operational aspects of your own business. This is usually a thing or a process, right? So when you're facing these three things and they keep coming up, you are overdue for a reboot. That much I can tell you for sure, okay? Remember that your business is an organism, it's not a machine, it's an organism which will contract and expand depending on a variety of factors. Cutting waste, for instance, will make a bloated operation contract and adding products will make a small business expand. But to really know how to contract and expand, you will need to become comfortable with the idea of rebooting any area of your organization as it may be required. You cannot cling to anything in business out of sentiment mentality. If it isn't working, you need to have no scruples about editing it out or restructuring it completely. Remember that, okay? We tend to cling to the good old days, <laughs> for instance, but this is not the good old days. You're living in the here or now, right? Things, things need to adapt. Things need to change. And sometimes it's not even a matter of being bad. It's just a matter of needing change. It doesn't mean you don't like someone anymore. It doesn't mean that you are ungrateful grateful for the help you've received up to now, but it's time to move forward to the next season and you have to free yourself up with a serious reboot. And with that, we are concluding part one of our show today.
today, episode 25 of Your Creative Force. And our show theme for today is... Mm-hmm rebooting your business flawlessly and we will be back with part two after the break catch the fire of creativity visit artbyavian.com a-v-i-a-n-n-e and now we return to our show with avian we're back with part two of our show today episode 25 of your creative force our theme for today rebooting your business flawlessly and in part two we are going to take a hard look at rebooting your partnerships or relationships in business this is actually quite a pain point for a lot of people we get attached to people remember in part one we ended by saying don't be too sentimental about things in your business and this is one good example okay you cannot be sentimental about people and this is a hard fact especially if we care about the people we work with I care about the people I partner with and there have been times where I had to move on from the partnership and it was devastating to me either the person revealed their true colors and I quickly realized that this partnership is going to burn me if I don't let it go or the person got stuck at a certain place in their journey and I had to move on without them if I wanted to move on. And it is hard. It is hard. I can tell you that I have had days when I literally sit and cry over this. It's very hard. And you need to, therefore, be sure to distinguish between what is personal and what is business. And it sounds really bad. And it sounds like some heartless thing you need to do. It doesn't, however, need to be heartless. You need to understand that. Okay. It doesn't have anything to do with being heartless. It just means that sometimes personal things and business things are different. And that's okay. You need to know that that is okay. In business, we often have to partner with others to achieve certain objectives. We need to hire people or contract work out. We need to partner with vendors and a variety of third parties regularly. If you want to operate in anything, if you do something really simple for a business, like let's say you make handmade soaps, right? You are still going to have to partner with a vendor who sends you your ingredients and things like that. So nobody who ever wants to do business in any way, shape or form, even a hobby level business, you cannot escape this. You are going to have to partner with other people, right? Third party doing your website, whatever it may be, you're not going to escape this, right? The experts tell us that having to drag around a business relationship that isn't really mutually beneficial or sustainable is actually dead weight. We don't need that. This is part of why we need to be very clear about the differences between personal and business relationships. The two are very different. And if the same person is your friend, who is also your business associate, then you may have a harder time being objective about this, but you still need to be. Okay. Sometimes you need to fire someone. If it is someone you care about, there are ways to let them down easy. I have always found that being direct with a compassionate approach is the simplest and best way to approach a breakup in business, right? Whether it's officially firing someone or just kind of going your separate ways. Okay. I would say to someone, Hey, Danny, for instance, the business deal is not really working out for us anymore. I have noticed. I still totally enjoy being your friend, but let's take a break and see if we can both find better business partners or better solutions. Usually this kind of approach works. Sometimes you will need to seek legal counsel, especially if your partnership is official or legally binding, right, to break up with a business partner. But that is normal. Don't allow it to trip you up too much and don't overthink it to the point of analysis paralysis. Sometimes we get scared of breaking a business partnership or breaking up a business deal with someone when we decide that this deal is really toxic. Okay. Now here's another thing you need to understand. This doesn't mean that you can just back out of things when you feel like it. Okay. You have to honor your commitments. Okay. That's why usually it's good to have a time limit. Okay. To have a time limit to a contract 
contract or a business idea so that when that time expires, you can then decide if you want to go forward with it or not, right? You can decide, do I want to move on with this business partner or is this the end of the road for us? So doing a deal that maybe is supposed to go for a few months, or a few years and then reevaluating is usually a good thing to do it the official way. That depends on your business. And I would definitely implore you seek legal counsel before you form partnerships in a legal capacity. Okay. You really need to know what you're doing before you do that. Seek counsel from wise mentors and coaches before you officially get yourself into something you don't really want to be in. Okay. So don't allow it to give you anxiety though. It doesn't have to be de- de- dealing with anxiety. I live in Silicon Valley and I can tell you on a regular basis, I see businesses fold. I see businesses breaking up. I see partners breaking up. It's a regular occurrence here where I am. So stuff like this does not faze me anymore because I see it all around me all the time. And you know what? The guys lick their wounds. They get up and they start another business. It's not a big deal. If you're dealing with a narcissist or you have a really wacky situation, it may be a huge deal, but usually Usually there's ways to just go your separate ways and you don't even have to burn the bridges. Okay. So let's look at some ways that you could know it is time to reboot a business relationship. I stumbled upon this article from the Young Entrepreneurs Council and I find it so relevant and practical that I want to share it with you. Now, this article was last updated November 2nd, 2017 by the Young Entrepreneur Council in Startup 2 under their advice drop-down menu on smallbiztrends.com. That's smallbiztrends.com. Small B I Z Z trends.com. For my European listeners, small B I Z Z trends.com. This is where you will find this. And the article is titled 12 Sure Signs You Shouldn't Trust a business partner or vendor. This is really cool stuff. And because these young entrepreneurs each had a really cool aspect to contribute to this, I'm going to uh, read some of this to you. And then I'm going to comment on some of this. Okay. So 12 sure signs you shouldn't trust a business partner or vendor by the Young Entrepreneur Council updated November 2nd, 2017. When working with an outside company, there are only so many factors you can control. But based on their behavior, you should know when it's time to back out. That's why we asked 12 entrepreneurs from Young Entrepreneur Council, YEC, the following question. What is one warning sign that a deal with a partner or vendor is not going to pan out? Here's what YEC community members had to say. Okay, now remember, we are talking about rebooting your partnerships or relationships in business. Okay, and we are reading an article that is about the 12 sure signs that you shouldn't trust a business partner or vendor. This is how you know you need to reboot such a relationship. Okay, so number one, this is said by Diana Goodwin from Aqua Mobile Swim School. Okay. Number one, there are long wait times between communications. Diana says, I find that when a partner or vendor takes a long time to respond to our calls or emails, it's not going to work out. I want to work with companies who are eager to work together and a lack of responsiveness tells me that they are either too busy to work together or they don't have their act together. And I will constantly be frustrated, underwhelmed by them and their performance. Okay, constantly frustrated and underwhelmed by them and their performance. Remember that if someone takes very long to get back to you and there's huge breaks in communication for long periods of time, and this happens on a regular basis, big red flag. Okay, this person is not delivering. They're not capable of delivering. They either have an inflated sense of their capabilities and their role in your relationship as a business partner, or they really just can't do it. They can't measure up and you are going to constantly struggle with them. You're going to struggle getting hold of them. They're not going to pull through for you in in an emergency kind of situation and they are going to be hard to find when you really need them to be solid and be there for you. So remember that. Number two, 
And this is by Darren Brustein, Dara Brustein of New York Under 40 Finance Whiz Kids. Okay, now Dara writes, it's easy to overlook something so small as what your instincts tell you. So point number two would be you have a hunch. But if you look back at many of the past deals that didn't pan out, I'd venture to guess that if you really thought about it, your gut was telling you it was heading in this direction. It's not everyone's style, but listening to your instincts is a powerful tool in navigating decisions. Okay, so number one sign that you need to know that it's time to uh, reboot a business partnership. There are long wait times between communications. Number two. You have a hunch. You just have this gut feel that something's weird with this person. And you know what? There are times when I have trusted my gut instinct on things and people and times I have not. And more often than not, my instincts are correct. Sometimes it takes a while to play out to know if my instincts are correct or not. But usually in the end, my initial instincts, I find out were correct. So learn to trust your instincts. You have a hunch, okay? Number three, and this is by Jonathan Long from Market Domination Media. You get inconsistent information. Okay, this is a very big one and this is a very obvious one. Okay, you don't need a super spidey sense or need to guess about this one. This is a very obvious one. You get inconsistent information. Jonathan says when a story or terms change after the first communication, it's a strong signal that you should walk away and not waste more time pursuing the relationship. Forget a three strikes policy. With me, it's one strike and you're out. There are plenty of potential partners and vendors. Don't waste your time with ones who aren't 100% honest and upfront from the beginning. Okay. I agree with Jonathan and I want to add something to what Jonathan is saying here. Okay. Don't get tricked into the thing that someone says to you. I am the only one or I am the best one in the industry who does this. It's not true. More often than not, 99.9% .9 of the time, you are going to find many other people who will do business with you in that way, with that product, with that service. You do not have to suck it up from someone who treats you poorly and who isn't reliable and who is inconsistent in their actions and their words because you are scared that there's nobody else out there who can do this with you. Trust me, there is. Okay, so... Number three, you get inconsistent information. Number four, and this is by Drew Gurley from Redbird Advisors. They can't take responsibility. When performance is lacking, they are quick to blame everyone else and take no personal responsibility. It's next to impossible to change people and should be a major red flag if they can't take responsibility for their own actions. This usually shows up relatively quickly in the relationship and needs to be handled immediately. Consider replacing rather than trying to change the behavior, okay? Very important what Drew says here. You cannot change people. You have to understand, if you are working with someone of a specific type of character and that character is a bad character, you're not going to change them, okay? Chances are you're going to have to pay the same price for working with them over and over again and you're going to lose your marbles <laughs> dealing with that, okay? So number four, a sign that you need to ditch a partner or need to reboot a partnership, they can't take responsibility. Number five, and this is a very strange one but i'm going to i'm going to expand on this one a little bit okay and this one is by Joshua Dorkin of bigger pockets they squabble over minor details the easiest way to predict a failed partnership is by the interest and trust emanating from the person representing the other business when they don't trust you and insist on detailed explanations nitpick contract details or make a large number of small changes to a fairly simple agreement, you know your partnership is in trouble, okay? And this is an interesting one, okay? I have learned this. If someone wants to challenge me on a deal or a type of partnership, whether they be a vendor or an actual uh, partner in operations in my business, if they challenge me around every single corner and they pick everything I do apart to the point where I feel I want to point my, pull my hair out. 
I'm like, okay, what is really going on here? And I have found that you spend so much time <laughs> appeasing a person like that, that it becomes just an energy drain. You can't get to the business. You can't get to doing the actual deal because this person is causing not only analysis paralysis for you and them together in putting this thing together, but they are nitpicky. It's like they want everything their way, but they're not even listening to you and they get upset and they get scared and they're very afraid and they're in anxiety over every minor detail. And you know what? If it gets to be a drag like that, watch out. Okay. So number five, they squabble over minor details. Number six, no one talks about money, even Matkovic for Spengo. The most successful partnerships and vendor relationships have a well thought out executable way to impact the bottom line. Often these conversations will circle, will circle around product ideas or general concepts. But once it comes down to the dollars and cents, things don't work out. Having the money conversation early on quickly weeds out bad opportunities. Okay. So if someone can't put their mouth where their money, with their money where their mouth is, or if they can't comfortably discuss money terms and negotiate back and forth with you about the money aspect of a deal or a business partnership, okay? And if you're asking questions to a vendor and they're backing down and backing out and going this way and that, you know you're in trouble, okay? So number six, no one talks about money. <laughs> number seven, they bait and switch. And this is by Jay Johnson, Johnson of Small Lot Wine. You have had a great conversation and feel things are really going well. You asked to have the other person write everything that was agreed upon and send it to you for further mutual discussion. When this person sent you over the written details of the conversation, it looks nothing like what was agreed on. This means one of two things. Either they are a bad listener or an untrustworthy person. Neither are good options. Okay, so watch for the bait and switch. <laughs> That is quite important. Then, number eight. They don't respond by George Morris of Emulus. Especially early on, if a vendor or partner goes dark for more than a few days, that's a huge red flag. It indicates a lack of importance and priority towards the relationship. Okay? That kind of goes for me with number one. Let me pull number one back up here. This is like there are long wait times between communications, right? That goes with number eight. They don't respond, okay? If you are really pulling teeth to get someone to get back to you or respond to you or talk to you about a deal or a potential partnership, big red flags. Number nine, they don't have any questions or concerns, this is kind of odd, okay? When quality business leaders, and this is by Manfred Singh of Talk Local, okay? When quality business leaders look at a deal and like what they see, they pull out a microscope and look for blind spots that may negatively impact their business. Sometimes they mull it over and follow up with questions later. But such due diligence is expected of anyone worthy of partnering with. The only type of deal that doesn't raise questions or concern is the kind that won't happen, okay? I would say on this one, what Manfred is saying here, they don't have any questions or concerns. I would add to number nine and say they are not really talking this thing through with you. Okay. Sometimes it's really weird, right? I want to partner with someone and I'm asking them questions and I'm waiting for their feedback and I'm getting like static, right? <laughs> they're not responding. They're not asking me questions in return. They're not really answering the questions I'm asking them in the first place. They kind of dodge my questions or it's just they seem very indifferent and uh, they don't really have any concerns or questions of their own, then I get worried. Because I'm like asking myself, okay, do they care? Now, I don't want them to pick everything apart to the point of nothing being functional, <laughs> but I do want to have a two-way street, right? I want to know what you're thinking and feeling about this. I want to know, I want to get a read on where we're going with this. And if I can't get a read on it because you are not even communicating with me, right? You will notice that a lot of these 12 points come down to good communication. And if people cannot openly and honestly communicate with you effectively about things, that is a huge, 
huge issue and a huge red flag. Okay, so number nine, they don't have any questions or concerns. Number 10, they argue against non-disclosure terms. Depending on what type of company or individual we may be working out a deal with, there will often be mutual non-disclosure, non-circumvention provisions. They're mutual and hold my company to the same expectations. So if a potential partner starts arguing the term of an NDNCA down to less than 24 months, I get concerned that their heart isn't in the right place. This is from Nicholas Najarian of Industrial Motor Power Corp. Okay, now, non-disclosure terms or non-circumvention provisions, those are agreements between businesses that say, basically, okay, in plain terms, I'm just going to make it as plain to you as possible. In plain terms, it means my business is not going to go behind your back to your contacts and kind of pull a fast one on you, right? Harm your business. I'm not going to do anything that harms your business. I'm not going to take the knowledge and the experience I gain from working with you and then use it against you to harm your business. And most businesses will ask you to agree to terms like that. I do ask people who work for me to agree to terms like that, that they are not going to do things that creates a conflict of interest for me or harm me, right? And that usually for two years after they have worked with me that they do not go and do some major competitive thing to me right around the corner from me in a way that's actually harmful to both our businesses. Now, now in some cases, you cannot legally hold someone to that, right? Like in California, there are some snags to this because it's a right to work state. Like you can't forbid someone to take a job with your competitor, for instance. So there are some technicalities involved with this and you do need some legal insight and legal input on this matter when you are looking at an NDA. But usually you can tell from a person's attitude towards signing an NDA if they are having their heart in the right place or not, right? If someone doesn't want to sign an NDA with me and they don't want to agree to some NDA terms, which basically benefits us both mutually, right? It basically will also state that I am not going to do that to you. If I get knowledge from you in the process, I'm not going to harm you in the process using that knowledge against you. It's basically a way of preventing people from, without even intending to do so, becoming turncoats on each other, right? Turning on each other in business um, in a very unprofessional way. So watch out for that, okay? Then, okay... Number 11, and this is from David Thomas of CyberClick. You have conflicting values. One of the biggest indicators of a successful deal that most people don't know about is value alignment. The first discussions that ultimately decide if both parties will make the deal cover the financials, plan and strategy, and the re- and the real sign of a good deal is the values that they hold, okay? They cover, in first discussions, they cover things like the financial plan and strategy. But what David is saying here is the real sign of a good deal is the values that they hold. These values determine the way they work and in turn, their compatibility to work with your business. I look for ethics. I look for sincerity. I look for character. If I think someone has bad character, I will not work for them. I don't care if they are the queen's best friend. (laughs) I will not work with a person of bad character because I know when push comes to shove, they're going to throw me under the bus and they're going to do whatever the heck they want and they're not going to care. They have no integrity. I know that already, so I won't work with them. Okay, so number 12. They propose problems without solutions. This one was contributed by Michael Portman of Bird's Barbershop. We hire vendors when we don't have the in-house knowledge to tackle the situation. When vetting contractors, for example, someone who is trying to impress by pointing out all the problems we may not have thought of with no solution in mind is a bad sign. That scares clients like myself. Someone who has the I can do this confidence that comes with experience will get it done most effectively, right? Someone cannot just enter your business and start picking you apart and not offering you better solutions. You 
have to look for someone who's actually sincere in partnering with you and wanting to see you succeed. So I'm going to summarize in conclusion of part two of our show today. 12 sure signs you shouldn't trust a business partner or vendor, which comes down to rebooting your partnerships or relationships in business. Okay. Number one, there are long wait times between communications. Number two, you have a hunch. Number three, you get inconsistent information. Number four, they can't take responsibility. Number five, they squabble over minor details. Number six, no one talks about money. Number seven, they bait and switch. Number eight, they don't respond. Number nine, they don't have any questions or concerns. Number 10, they argue against non-disclosure terms. Number 11, you have conflicting values. Number 12, they propose problems without solutions. And if this is the case, run forest run <laughs> okay and reboot that part of your business reboot those relationships this is the conclusion of part two of our show episode 25 of your creative force today our show theme being rebooting your business flawlessly and we will be back shortly with the last part part three of our show talent is a flame genius is a fire Turn to our show with your host, Avian. And we are back with part three of episode 25 of Your Creative Force today. Our theme for today being rebooting your business flawlessly. And in part three, we are going to look at how and what exactly to reboot. And this goes beyond just your business relationships, right? So you basically reboot three basic areas of your business. One, your business relationships, as we discussed in part two. Right, You do this by seeking out new affiliations and cutting loose the ties that do not serve you well. You do not have to burn bridges. You just have to be politely professional and get legal counsel if needed. Maybe you need to fire someone or hire someone or simply walk away from an idea or a person you were fixated on pursuing. Right? You cannot please everyone and you cannot pursue everything if it's not being mutually beneficial. Remember that, okay? Number two, your operations, habits or projects. Anything you do in a certain way that may not be optimized or working for you. From the apps you use to the forms your customers fill out to the types of projects you accept into your business to the functionality of your website. You have to prioritize a new with a fresh way of streamlining things. Maybe you need more breaks. Maybe you need less clients, but but bigger and better clients. Maybe you need to consider expanding your business as we discussed in our previous episode, episode 24, expanding a small business sensibly. Or maybe you need to downsize. Only you will really know. Okay. Number three, your actual physical presence. If you have a home office, okay, declutter it and tidy it up. Your actual physical space is important. File away things you never got to before. Take care of loose ends. Create a new admin system. Get rid of old paperwork. Change your location if need be. Maybe it is time to move into an actual office space instead of working from home. Once again, only you will know. So the three areas you reboot is your business relationships as we discussed in part two. Number two, your operations, habits or projects. And number three, your actual physical presence and space. Okay. So remember, your objective is to declutter and streamline your organization. Remember this goal as you reboot. Do not overthink it. Do not fall into the habit of paralysis analysis, paralysis analysis, paralysis, right? However, which way around you want to say it. Be as objective as possible and stay away from sentimental decisions, okay? Be kind, be polite, but also be firm and decisive, okay? You cannot risk your business business at the hands of being overly enabling to someone who is just not working out for you or something that is not really helpful. And then here is an interesting article on how to reboot a business in terms of adjusting your mindset. A lot of it has to do with mindset and how you approach things, right? So I found this on conversational.com. There was no indication who wrote this. So I would assume that it is compiled as part of their website content. And I just wanted to go over this because I thought this was such a fantastic 
fantastic article. Okay. And it's on conversational.com. Okay. And it is about how to just refresh or reboot. Right. So. Is it time to start over this year and have a refresher on your business? Maybe your product is not turning out to be the quality product you thought it was, or your business plan isn't working out quite like you hoped. Whatever is not working, it may be time to reset your business in order to achieve the personal success you were seeking out in the first place. It doesn't mean you have to wipe out everything you've worked on thus far and start over with a new product, logo, and business model. Remember, we were saying that would be more like a relaunch. But if there is is one area that is clearly holding you back. It is time to accept the challenge to make changes that will allow you to succeed. So follow this guide to see what ways you could reset your business in order to be successful in this coming year, right? So where to begin? It's time to sit down and take a look at the questions you need to be asking and getting the answers to. Perhaps you aren't sure where the problem lies, but you know that your customers are not leaving with a smile or that they are leaving poor reviews for you after an experience with your business. Instead of a design problem, you could have a problem with your customer interactions. Instead of wanting your customers to change, ask yourself what you could change to improve their emotional levels after an interaction with your company. What could you do different that would make them excited to do business with you again? Then, looking past your doubts. You may be full of self-doubt when it comes to business decisions. You may feel doubtful inside that you can be successful at that or that you have the control to have a great day. When your inner voice fills you with doubt, it's important to do a little self-talk in which you mentally tell yourself that you can complete this task, that you can have a great day, and that you can find ways to improve your business. If you're trying to brainstorm or pump yourself up for the day, one trick is to talk out loud to yourself because studies show that gaining clarity and fixes to a problem or coming up with a great idea for a problem many times come from talking out loud, gaining confidence. Once you've started working on eliminating your doubts, you may start to feel more confidence in your decision making. You may have times that you need to make decisions on the spot and you'll need confidence to do so. If you treat decision making like a muscle, that needs work needs to be worked on to get stronger, you'll find that decision making can get easier over time. Eventually, you won't find it to be so stressful or intimidating. And when a tense situation arises, you'll be able to calmly and rationally make a decision quickly. Okay. So when you find yourself in a situation where your business has taken a bad hit, the key to success is to move past the situation as quickly as possible. Pushing it out of your mind right away is the way to avoid having it ruin everything else you are working towards in your business. You can spend the time to analyze and deconstruct the mistake to understand how to avoid it in the future. But it's important to keep your positive thinking in check right away despite the issue so that it won't spiral into other areas of your business success. Instead of pulling that product that seems to fail as soon as you launched it, get the information you need first to see what the real issue is, right? No emotional decisions, okay? And then I'm just going to mention to you guys the few last points that is mentioned here in uh, this article by, let me just re- visit that conversational.com, right? Okay. So you do want a healthy business. You do want to be improving yourself and you do want to know where to begin. Okay. You do want to look past your doubts. You do want to gain confidence. You do want a good attitude in being a leader. It is important to keep your attitude in check during misfortunes with your company. Okay. Your attitude is everything. So in rebooting your business, remember, Remember your mindset, okay? And just to quickly go over these points again, okay? To actually know how to reboot your business, you have to know and assess where to begin. You have to be looking past your doubts. You have to gain confidence. You have to mind your attitude and you have to be a leader, Okay, you have to improve yourself and you have to make sure that your business is healthy. Now, if you want more details on these points, please go and listen to our previous episodes because we go into detail on a lot of this. Okay, and I'm going to love and leave you today after these wonderful things I gave you in my content today with the quote of the day from the beloved civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King. And he said, take the first step in faith. You don't have 
have to see the whole stair, guys. Just take the first step. Until next time, this is Avian for your creator force. Talent is a flame. Genius a fire. Visit us at artbyavian.com. Tune in next time as we explore your creative force. Thank you for listening.